All right, bring it in. Let's go. Hey, you, over there. Look at me. You missed the bucket like three times. You're standing right here, and all you got to do is put your head down and get into the bucket. Come on. We're way better than that. You guys hanging around here, your tail between your legs, standing around, doing nothing. Utterly useless. You three guys right here, all you do is wander around banging into things. And over there, you just stare at me like I don't know what I'm talking about. I don't get any response. Look at you. Let's go. Don't look at me like that. Look at me with both eyes. Okay? Come on. Some things never change. Yo. Hey, coach. These are a bunch of duds. <laughs> <laughs> I am a little confused as to what we're doing here. I came to talk about a basketball team, and you got me staring at some livestock. You might think it's all about basketball, but this was a farm before we started churning out all Americans. The only thing we churned was butter. I'm Sue Bird, and I love basketball. All right, let's talk to the kid who wanted it most. Sue Bird. That's why I'm on a mission to learn everything there is to know about the history of the college game. Hello? It's a Sue Bird call. My playing days may be over, but this new basketball journey is sure to be quite the adventure. The University of Connecticut is, in many ways, the place where my basketball career took off. I'm proud to have been a part of one of the nation's most successful and storied programs. So as I start this new journey to learn everything there is to know about college basketball, it's only fitting that I start in the place that still feels like home, Stores, Connecticut. I spent four years of my life in Stores, forming lifelong friendships, making memories I'll never forget, and most importantly, winning. Connecticut made it look easy. Like, a lot of winning. 39 and 0, Connecticut is perfect. Bird back the other way. Nice drive and back. And now that I think about it, pretty much all we did was win. Connecticut has done it. They have won the national championship here in Philadelphia. All right, let's talk to the kid who wanted it most. Super. The UConn women's basketball team has won 11 NCAA championships, more than any other women's college basketball program. Two of which, I might add were one during my time in stores. They'll fix it in post. But you can't tell the story of UConn women's basketball without talking to the most decorated coach of all time, Gino Oriema. Gino, Gino took the head coaching job in 1985 and has since transformed the program from shoestring to soaring building a reputation as a fierce competitor There's nobody guarding you. and tireless teacher in the process. Fakes loot just like that. Move the defense and then boom. So I met up with my old coach to learn the long, very long, story of the Huskies' history. It all started in 1880. Two brothers named Stores donated 170 acres and they started an agricultural school. You didn't know that, did you? Before we were the Huskies, we were known as the Aggies, which is short for agricultural school. So in 1933, it was called Connecticut State College. And then six years later, it became the University of Connecticut. You didn't know that either, did you? If you were listening before, you would already know this. Yukon's dairy production is top 10 in the country. See, aren't you glad you came up here? Okay, okay, I get it. But with all this talk about farms, how do we ever get so good at basketball? One big reason. Moi. <laughs> Come back strong. Good pass. Good pass. Gino Ariema was able to create the same chemistry. Gino, a proven champion and leader in our game. Let's take it back to 1985. You're the assistant coach at a great program, University of Virginia. Yep. And then you come up here for the opportunity to be a head coach. What were you expecting? I wasn't expecting the cows. <laughs> I wasn't expecting much, to be honest with you. I just wanted an opportunity to coach. How bad was the team, the program, when you first got here? How bad? Um, during my interview, they didn't show me the gym. 
<laughs> that should have been a sign. <laughs> and we played in a gym where there was a track around it, and we couldn't get the professors off the track to start our game. And for practice, the floor was always wet because it leaked, mm -hmm. and we didn't have a locker room. We borrowed one Wait. during the season. And then when the men had a home game, we had to move out because the visiting men's team used that locker room. So it was a real mom and pop operation. Our first game, there was 145 students there. We had to do anything we could to get them there. They didn't have to buy tickets. We were giving away tickets. I could hear people talking in the stands and what they were saying. That's how bad it was. But the days of playing in a near empty stadium were short lived. Under Gino's leadership, the program began to change. At 24 and 5, UConn posted its best record ever. I think we're getting close to, to what I had imagined when I first came up here. In 1990, UConn unveiled the shiny new Gamble Pavilion. And before long, the only thing Gino was hearing during games was 10,000 screaming Husky fans cheering on his team. If you look back in the first 10 years, you started to increase the success, but you hadn't won a national championship yet. So Correct. is there a person, a reason, a moment? What do you think helped you get over that hump and get you that first title? Uh, it started, I think, in 1991. Rebecca Lobo was coming out of high school. And I thought once we were able to recruit her to come, that at that point, we might be able to like take the next step. And that's when it all took off. By the 1994-95 season, Lobo, then a senior, was leading the Huskies to what became an historic season of epic proportions. 1994-95, that winter to that spring, as we were undefeated, it became a phenomenon I have not seen since. Husky mania has permeated everywhere. Every week, some major writer from some major newspaper in America was here to do a story. Rebecca became kind of like the face of women's basketball. We became more of a national program, and that culminated with winning the national championship. Lobo. The UConn women's basketball team went 35 and 0 that season. With an undefeated record, UConn has won the national championship. No other word for it, perfection. No one at UConn had ever experienced anything like this to that magnitude. A lot of anticipation out here at the International Airport uh, waiting for the national champion UConn women's basketball team. What a celebration. Almost 5,000 people here to see you guys come over the plane. I can't believe it? that's unbelievable. I can't believe all these people are here. It's just wonderful. This big of a crowd right No, not at all. So many people have been touched by what we've done. And, uh, I'm happy that we could do something like that and, and have them enjoy it. I remember you guys winning in 95, yeah. coming home on the bus, yeah. everybody's on the highway. People line the highways, the bridges, yeah. And that had to have been insane. When you think about 95, when you think yeah. about it being the first, how did it make you feel? Well, you're never sure that you can actually do something like that. Mm -hmm. And then when you have the opportunity to do it, and then you do it, it's like this amazing confidence builder. But then it became like a drug right away. Oh. It's like, we just won, and somebody injected you with something. Mm -hmm. Because now 96 came along, and you're like, we gotta do it again. Mm -hmm. So it was the best thing that ever happened to, to me. <laughs> And in some ways, it was the worst thing that ever Rated happened to me. An because, yeah, now you're chasing that every single year. Right. And then when we didn't win 96, 97, 98, 99, mm -hmm. I thought we'll never win another one. Yeah. And then we had a great recruiting class. <laughs> and then uh, we won in 2000. And Connecticut has done it. They have won the national championship here. That, in some ways, was even more important than the first one, yeah. because that means we That's could do it again. 39-0, Connecticut is perfect. This team, again, showed just how tremendous they are. And that's when it really blew up. Mm -hmm. So big that now it is what it is today. What it is today is a total powerhouse. They did it! The Connecticut Huskies! After winning in 95 and 2000, wins three national championships in a row. The Geno-led Huskies won nine more championships over the next 16 years. The national championship goes to Connecticut for the fourth year in a row as the dynasty fulfills its destiny. 
had separate winning streaks of 70, 90, and 111 games. The Yukon Huskies 39 and 0. And produced some of the greatest players to ever grace the game. All Americans everywhere you look on this floor. Anna Stewart, the three time most outstanding player at the Final Four. Rossi over Jackson, three, drained it. Charles on a high post. Tina Charles, a quick hitter. And now for tonight's player of the game. Without question, it's Maya Moore. Maya just made some huge shots. Uh, it's unbelievable. This is unbelievable. Simply put, Coach Ariyama has overseen one of the greatest sports dynasties in American history. Did you ever in your wildest dreams think that 38 years later you've been sitting here with more rings than you could fit on two hands? No. I didn't think I'd have one ring for one finger, much less too many for two hands. But... It's hard work. It didn't just happen because we showed up. We were good and we got better because every day we came to work and we got our hands dirty. And in order for you to understand exactly what I'm talking about, you're gonna have to get your hands dirty. Let's go. Gino wasn't kidding when he said I'd be getting my hands dirty. My old coach was about to teach me a new skill, one that is deeply ingrained in Yukon's dairy farming history. As Coach Ariyama's point guard, he coached me hard. But as I pulled up a stool next to my new four-legged friend, I wondered, would I finally see a more supportive side of Gino? <laughs> nope. <laughs> Let's go. Woo! I don't know that you have your hands in the right place. Oh, God. I think you have too much in the palm. You gotta have it more in the fingers. Come on. Okay. You gotta angle that udder so it's going right at the bucket. Right, we're wasting all this milk here, you know? Worked so hard to make all that milk, it's, he's milking the sawdust. I put a bowl of Raisin Bran or something under there. The legendary Sue Bird. You're supposed to be great at everything. Admit it, you can't milk cows. One at a time. Boom, boom, boom. Ah. Jesus, Mary and Joseph. If you're so good at it, why don't you do it? All right. I'll show you. Get the hell out of the way. All you. All right, here we go. I'm not just good. Um, Legendary. <laughs> Look at this. This is so good. Mm, mm, mm. Look at that. It's like a fire hose. <sighs> Sue, you smell that? Couch. It's the sweet smell of success. I didn't know it smelled like. Ah. It smells like grade A whole milk from Connecticut. I left the barn impressed with Gino's dairy farming know-how and with a greater appreciation for his impact on the Yukon women's program. Champions, the University of Connecticut. And it isn't just the women's program that's a grade-A juggernaut. The men's side has five national championships to their name, three of which were won under legendary coach Jim Calhoun's leadership in 1999, 2004, and 2011. The Huskies have their dreams come true. UConn is the only school to win both the men's and women's titles in the same year. And they've done it twice. And once again, Storrs Connecticut is the center of the college basketball universe. It's a remarkable achievement, made all the more impressive when you think about where the program started. With Coach Ariyama's words still ringing in my head. Our first game, there was 145 students there. And a couple of gallons of farm fresh milk in hand. I set out for everyone's favorite Yukon sweet spot with a plan to gift 145 Husky fans with free ice cream. One for each fan who showed up for Coach Ariyama's first game back in the day. All right, I've got enough milk for 145 cones. Who's gonna help me serve them? We can do it. AZ, Paige, all right, cool. Paige Beckers and AZ Fudd are both star players from the current generation of Huskies. Beckers was the Naismith National Player of the Year as a freshman in 2021. And Fudd helped UConn reach the national championship game as a freshman in 2022, before averaging 15.1 points per game the following year as a sophomore. Before their season started, I wanted to get the scoop from Paige and AZ on what it's like to be a Husky these days. So guys, I just came from milking cows with Coach Ariyama. I mean, wow. I've never been more impressed by that man. Was it as good as his dance? <laughs> his dancing. You mean this dance? <laughs> he 
he thinks he's more mellow now. So the question is, do you think he's mellow? You stand there like a dog. You stand here like a dog. And you're gonna get better. My freshman year, he was not chill. I feel like AZ has gotten the chiller version. She's also a princess, so she doesn't really get yelled at much. So when I was in school, there was the precious one. So you're the precious one? I guess. And I'm not complaining. Tell me why you came to Connecticut. I came to Connecticut because, I mean, you look at the walls, you look at the history. That is why they are the number one team in the country. It's the basketball cap of the world that says enough, but coming here on visits and watching practices, I knew that this was the place that would help me reach my goals of winning. Fun gets an open look and knocks down the triple. Becoming the best player I can be and getting me to the next level. Why did you decide to come to UConn? A lot of the same reasons as AZ. I know Coach and the whole coaching staff would push me to be the best player in person that I could be. I'm seeing how well their pros do, like you, D, Amaya, Stewie, all the legends that come here, and how well they've gotten better in college, gotten better in the pros, then obviously you want to win a national championship. I'm all about that, so seeing the success and how they know how to do it and they have the blueprint, it was an easy decision for me. Obviously, when you go to Connecticut, there's a lot of pressure. So, I mean, I walk into the practice facility and I look up and I'm like, damn, it's a lot of banners. So how do you guys handle that pressure, those expectations? <laughs> I did not handle it well when I got here. Like, I don't, my freshman year was a blur and I feel like I looked up at those banners and kind of compared myself to everyone and after we lost the national championship. South Carolina is gonna be the one celebrating tonight. You said something along the lines of, it hurts now, like it sucks, but like remember, you're not all the other UConn teams. Like you're gonna write your own like story in the UConn history book. So that's really helped my mindset. When I was uh, deciding to come to UConn, I kind of knew like the pressure and the expectations that existed, but nothing is harder than the pressure that we put on ourselves and the pressure that we see in practice. Under a minute and a half to go, Beckers. We all love it, we embrace it, and we want to win, and we want to win a national title because that's what you do at UConn. Well, I'm gonna tell you right now, when it's all said and done, you guys go win it, you're actually not even gonna remember winning it, you're gonna remember the hard moments the most. What would it mean to bring a championship back to stores? My time here at UConn has been amazing, but winning a national championship would be the cherry on top. I like where your head's at. Now, how do you guys feel about serving some ice cream? Let's do Let's it. Let's do, do it. it. The mission? Dish out those 145 free scoops in honor of those fans at Coach Ariyama's first game before closing time, starting now. Mark, we got a pumpkin for Mark. Don't be shy. There you go, Mark. Cinnamon caramel for Alex, Hannah, pumpkin, yeah. Paige, AZ, and I continued serving, but with less than an hour until close, we had our work cut out for us. It was time to step it up. Pumpkin, banana chocolate pumpkin for Elise, salted caramel, chocolate peanut butter swirl. Cream number 145. We've got a kibble crunch. Uh, oh, okay, <laughs> okay. Like a true husky, just get right in there. After we scooped our final Sunday, I was feeling grateful to have learned a whole new side of my beloved alma mater. You ready? So you know I had to commemorate that moment with a selfie. You got on three, one, two, three. You got on. Got it. You want a picture with me and me? Cows are going to revolt tonight. They're going to break down the fence. It'll be like Braveheart. They're all going to charge. <laughs> Go. What are their names? Which one's? Coco. Coco? Yeah. This one? I mean, definitely use that. Who's the other one? Latte? Coco. Coco. Darn, Coco. You're oh, like man. doing your double dance. I was dance like, Coco. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. Um, I don't remember any of the lines. <laughs> right, Coco? <laughs> Get out of our Mark. way. Everybody's sleeping. The cows are going to rampage. <laughs>